All right, hello everyone, and today we'll be discussing about how to solve cortex, which are mainly written in their standard form of ax to the power of 4 plus bx cubed plus cx plus dx plus e is equal to 0. And like quadratics, they behave similarly since they will always have at least two possible solutions. And for example, we have a formula for the quadratic that we all know and love, minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And we would hope that there is a formula that is as simple as the quadratic formula, but for the quartic, right? Sadly, that isn't the case, because there is a formula, but it's quite it's quite long and not practical for any real uses, actually. So, how do we find all the solutions to a cortex? Well, we have several numerical me methods, such as Newton's method, the secant method, bisection method, but those are more for advanced courses, just like this formula, which is not usually taught in normal courses. But how do we solve cortex with a reliable algebraic method? Well, luckily we have one, which is known as Ferrari's method. And it was discovered during the 16th century by a mathematician named Ludovico Ferrari. And what he, what he usually would do or what he always did in order to solve cortex was looking at a cortex, a general cortex of this form, he would depress it by setting x is equal to y minus b over 4a, which would cancel out the x cubed term. And by substituting x for y minus b over 4a, we would get x to the power of 4 plus px squared plus q x plus r equals zero but what he would do from here now would be to complete the square on both sides but he would have to add on to complete the square and i will show an example just to see or to demonstrate how it would work and how we could practically use ferrari's method so we will be using a an example to see how ferrari's method usually does work and we will see how to solve cortex. So let's just take the example. Well, we'll first be looking at a depressed cortex, of course, since depressing a full cortex would be much more time consuming. So the cortex we will be looking at today will be x to the power of four plus x squared minus six x minus eight is equal to zero. And here we will see how we would solve it using Ferrari's method. I could have done it using terms of P, P, Q, and R, but it would have been better to show a worked example so we could see how it actually works instead of using variables to determine. So, first, we're going to move negative 6x and negative 8. So we have to do is just add 6x or add plus 8 to both sides plus 8, which we don't really need to write that out since we could just do it without doing that little step. So where we would get x to the power of 4 plus x squared is equal to 6x plus 8. Now, what Ferrari did would mainly be adding p x squared plus p squared, which is in a, in this example p is one, so we would have to just add one x squared plus one, where we would get x to the power of four plus two x squared plus one is equal to x squared plus six x plus nine, so we have to add it to maintain the equality. And as we see here, we could express the left side as a perfect square now, 
which we could reduce it to be x squared plus 1 squared is equal to x squared plus 6x plus 9. And as we see here, we end up getting another perfect square on this side, which we could just write as x squared plus 1 squared is equal to x plus 3, because that is a perfect square that we were given, plus 3 squared. Now we will take the square root of both sides, where we would get x squared plus 1 is equal to plus or minus the expression we had earlier, plus 3. And now what we will do is just distribute the plus and minus, or plus or minus to the x and 3, giving us x squared plus 1 is equal to plus or minus x plus or minus 3. And now, since this, well, this sign is positive, what we will do now is have plus and plus and minus and minus. We could try plus minus, but if we do and get the solutions out of that and plug it back into our original quartic, they will be false. So be careful with that. Because now what we have here is x squared plus 1 is equal to x plus 3. And let me just write down up here. x squared plus 1 is equal to negative x minus 3. And by moving everything to the left side, we get x squared plus x plus 4, which we see has no real solutions as this is above the x-axis. And this one, we will now just move everything to the left side where we would get x squared minus x minus 2 is equal to 0, where we could factor this quadratic since we would get x plus 1 times x minus 2 since if we multiply it out we would get the middle term and here we cannot factor it so easily so we would either have to complete the square or use the formula which is better to just use the formula where we would get x is equal to negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 minus 16 over 2, where we would get the other two, other two complex solutions, which are negative 1 plus or minus i root 15 over 2, which from the looks of it, it does give us all our solutions. We have our two here and our two other here where we end up getting x is equal to negative one comma positive two. And if we were to plug it back into our original equation into this one, we should get our solution again or our true solution. Let's just plug in negative 1 since that's more simpler, where we would get negative 1 to the power of 4, that's just 1. Negative 1 squared is 1. Negative 1 times negative 6, that equals 6, which does indeed equal 8, and 8 minus 8 is equal to 0. So seeing that this solution works, we could say that 2 also works because they're both from the same quadratic. So let's go ahead and try 2 out. And then we'll look at another long time consuming example. So 2 to the power of 4 is 16. x squared or 2 squared is 4. 2 times 12, 2 times 6 is 12 minus 8, which does indeed give us 20 minus 20, which is indeed equal to 0. So that gives us our solution. So we indeed have our first two solutions, and 
these also are part of the solutions because if we were to multiply this quadratic and this other quadratic here, we would be able to get our original quartic that we originally had. So with this in mind, we have luckily came across a quartic that squares on both sides or gives us perfect squares. And luckily, we could have just squared, taken the square root of both sides or simply used synthetic division. But sometimes, as we know, not all quadratics, cubics, quartics are factorable by rational numbers. So with that in mind, we will look at another quartic right now and see how that works out. So we will look at another example. Let's see how that will turn out. And in the unlikely event that this does turn out to be a long quartic that we have to solve, then so be it. So now let's just do what we did last time by moving 9x and 10 to the right side, giving us x to the power of 4 minus 2x squared is equal to positive 9x minus 10. Now to complete the square, we have to add negative two and four, because that's a perfect square, minus four x squared plus four is equal to negative two x squared plus nine x plus or minus six. And in this, in this example, we see that we cannot reduce this quadratic on the right side, but we can indeed reduce what is on the left side to be a perfect square minus 2 squared is equal to negative 2 x squared plus 9x minus 6. So what do we do now, you're wondering? Well, in order to complete the square on both sides, we have to find a new variable, which is by adding 2x squared plus p z plus z squared. And by doing so, we will basically get this on the left side. I would just write out in simple terms instead of going to the extra work. Squared is equal to parentheses negative 2 plus 2z x squared plus 9x minus 6. Or let's just simplify that so that we don't get confused. Plus negative 6 plus no minus 4z plus z squared, where now we have to find what z is. But how do we find what z is? Well, let's go ahead and try to simplify the equation by using the discriminant on the quadratic's right side. And as we know, the discriminant of a quadratic is just b squared, or yeah, b squared minus 4ac. So let's just write that on the top. So we could simply just get rid of the bottom part to make more space. So I'll write x squared minus 2 plus z squared is equal to z x squared plus 9x plus negative 6 minus 4z plus z squared. And let's just erase what is on the bottom now so we could clear up some more space. And now we have to use the discriminant of 
the quadratic, which is squared minus 4ac. And by doing so now, we will get 81 minus 4 times negative 2 plus 2z times negative 6 minus 4z plus z squared. Now let's just go ahead and simplify by multiplying what's inside the parentheses where we get negative 2 times negative 6, that's just 12. Negative 2 times negative 4z gives us positive 8z. And negative 2z squared, negative 2z squared. Now let's multiply 2z by everything else, where we get negative 12z minus 8z squared plus 2z cubed which now let's just go ahead and simplify even more. 12 minus 4z minus 10z squared plus 2z cubed. And let's go ahead and simplify by multiplying negative 4 now, since we cannot divide any 1 by 4, where we will get negative 48 plus 16z plus 40z squared minus 8z cubed. Now we'll just rearrange it from left to right, negative 8z cubed plus 40z squared plus 16z minus, well, plus 40 1 minus 8, that will be 33. So now we have to find a value of z that will satisfy and make the equation equal to 0. So we for I forgot to include that to equal z to 0. But now we know. And by doing so, we have to solve for z, where we would originally plug into our original equation, which would give us the perfect squares on both sides. So let's just clear up this again. And let me just write the equation down at the top where we would get negative eight z cubed plus 40 z squared plus 16 z plus 33 is equal to zero. So now what we will do is erase everything now. Let's just get rid of that box. And we have several values we could test. We could use synthetic division, of course, since that is always a good tool to have. And we could also try to solve using numerical methods like Newton's method or a method such as Let's see, what can we use? We could use a cubic formula, which is going to be quite long, but we're not going to use that just to make the video short. And what we'll do is try to find a rational solution first. So we should try to list the numbers. Let's use the rational root theorem or synthetic division. We would get plus or minus one comma plus or minus 11 comma plus or minus 33, which are all the factors of 33. And we could try plus or minus one at the bottom because A is one comma plus or minus two, comma plus or minus four, and plus or minus eight, of, of course. So let's just try one. If we plug in one, it's gonna just be everything without the Z. So eight minus 16 is, six, is eight. 
So that's going to be 48. Well, that's going to be 73, 81. And we see that it's not equal to zero. So we can, we're can we just going to cross out one because we already tested it. And it will be the same thing with negative one. It would just be positive eight, negative 16. That would be negative eight. That would be negative 32. And that would equal about, let's see, positive eight minus 16, negative eight. Negative eight plus 40, that's 32. So we around 30, about one, but we're just gonna ignore negative one. And we will now try 11, which we could tell is not gonna work because 11 cubed is gonna be a huge number. So we don't want that. Let's try using any number like two or four or eight. So let's go ahead and try Z is equal to 11 over two. And by doing so, we will apply synthetic division. 11 over 2, negative 8, plus 40, 16, and 33. So let's multiply that where we would get negative 8. Now multiply negative 8 by 11 over 2, where we would get negative 44 which if we add and subtract these we would get negative 4 now we multiply this up here negative 4 times 11 over 2 we end up getting 22 or negative 22 negative 22 and then we now get 8 no six or negative six and multiplying negative six and eleven that gives us negative sixty six divided by two which is thirty three which indeed gives us zero so we found our value which is luckily rational now what we will do what we will do is plug it back into our equation up here so let me just clear some of the stuff up right now. So let's just write it up here. Z is equal to 11 over two. But what we will do now is not replace Z yet. But what we get from the right side now is gonna be different from our equation up here. So we will get X times the square root of negative 2 plus 2z plus, because this is positive, 9 divided by 2 square root of negative 2 plus 2z all squared. And seeing this, we completed the square on the right side because if we were to square all this out, we should get this, all this up here. And as we can see, if we just take the square root, or we square x and the square of this, we would end up getting x squared times negative 2 plus 2z, which is, of course, true to our original equation, which is this. So we don't need to worry about that right now. And what we need to do now is substitute x, I mean, z for their original values, which indeed is going to give us x squared minus 2 plus 11 over 2 which we can simplify right now so we could not do it later. So with this, with negative two, that would be four, which is gonna be seven over two, plus seven over two squared is equal to x times the square root of negative two, plus two times 11 over two, that's gonna give us 11, which is going to give us 9, because 11 minus 2 is 9. So we'll just do 9 plus 9 divided by 2 square root of 9 squared. Now we can see that this gives us x squared plus 7 
over 2 squared is equal to 3x plus 9 divided by 3. That will be 3 divided by 2 squared. And now we just take the square root of both sides. x squared plus 7 over 2 is equal to plus or minus 3x and plus or minus 3 over 2. And now we want to find our two quadratics. And we have to do as we did in the previous example, positive and positive, because this is positive. If the sign here is negative, then it would be positive and negative and negative and positive. But in this example, it is positive. So we will get positive and positive, which gives us x squared minus 3x minus 7 that would give us 4x or 4 just 4 by itself no that would give us yeah that would give us 2 is equal to 0 and our other quadratic would be x squared plus 3x plus 5 and we want to solve them now so equals 0. Let's go ahead and solve this one first. As we see, we could possibly factor this. So we have to find a number that multiplies it 2 and adds to negative 3. And those two numbers are x minus 2 and x minus 1. Since negative 2 and negative 1 equals positive 2, and negative 1 minus 2 equals negative 3, so that's true. So we end up getting x is equal to 1, comma 2, which we found our first two solutions. And we also have this other quadratic we have to solve, where we would solve it using the quadratic formula, and we would get x is equal to minus 3 plus or minus root 9 minus 20, which gives us 11 or negative 11, which we just write as i, all over 2. So we found our solutions, which are negative 3 plus or minus i, root 11 over 2. Let me just write that neater. i, root 11, over 2. So our original quartic was x to the power of 4. To the power of 4 minus 2x squared minus 9x plus 10 is equal to 0. Okay, so in order to verify our solutions, we're just going to multiply x squared minus 3 plus 2. Let's just go ahead and write this on the right side x squared minus 3x plus 2 times x squared plus 3x plus 5. OK, so now we have 5 times 2, which is 10. So we'll write that on the farther right. Or so we'll do that later, actually. So we have x squared times x squared, which is x to the power of 4 plus 3x cubed plus 5x squared minus 3x cubed minus 9x minus 15x minus 9x squared. So we have there and the negative 3, that's 3x cubed minus 9x squared minus 15x. Now we have plus 2x squared plus 6x plus 10. So we now could just group like terms, x to the power of 4, this cancels out, as well as this. And now we have 7x squared minus 9x, which is going to be 2x squared or negative 2x squared, so we could just get rid of these now. And now we just have to add our x terms, which is negative 15x plus 6x, which just gives us negative 9x plus 10 which does indeed give us our original equation. So with that, 
we solve another quartic, but which was more time consuming and which gave us again two rational solutions. So we have solved two quartics in this video, and here we were able to verify that Ferrari's method does indeed work since we're basically solving a cubic to get the solution of a quartic because what we're doing in reality is solving the cortex cubic resolvent, which will help us identify the roots later on. As we saw in this example, we found Z or Z is equal to 11 over two. And plugging that into the equation above here, which is this one marked in red, or in red brackets, we were able to get everything down here, which is in blue. which indeed managed to give us our quadratics, which were here. And by factoring the quadratic, we got our first two solutions and by our second quadratic, we were able to solve it using the quadratic formula. And we got all our four solutions. And we verified that the complex solutions are indeed part of the equation was simply by just multiplying the two quadratics together to see if it equals our quartic, which indeed did give us our quartic as shown here. So thank you for watching. And if you want me to solve any quartics, just write one down and I will go ahead and upload that quartic you suggest. And if you want me to go into any other topics, then just let me know and I'll gladly go into the topics any one of you comments. So thank you and have a good day.